Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel where I talk about Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to the channel, hello and welcome. Please take a moment to hit that red subscribe button and that way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow. Today we are going to dissect software update 2020.36.10 for our Tesla Model 3 Performance Stealth here in Sydney, Australia. We're gonna do that and much more right after this. Okay, so we received software update 2020.36.10 this morning for our Tesla Model 3 Performance Stealth. But what was really incredible was that this was actually the second software update in less than 24 hours for our Tesla here in Australia. So we actually received 2020.36.3.1 yesterday and I was actually about to do a video today about that software update when this one, 2020.36.10, dropped this morning, less than 24 hours later. So that really is quite incredible. And thank you, Tesla, and thank you, Elon Musk, for providing that for us Tesla owners. Right, so without further ado, let's have a look at the release notes for this update. First one, traffic light and stop sign control. This one is the one I've been really waiting for, commonly known as go on green. Let's go through it together. The traffic light and stop sign control feature no longer requires explicit driver confirmation of pulling the autopilot stalk to continue through green traffic lights when there is a lead vehicle ahead of you. The stop line in the driving visualization will now turn green to indicate that the car will continue through an intersection. Please continue to pay attention and be ready to take immediate action, including braking, because this feature may not stop for all traffic controls. This feature will not attempt to turn through intersections, but over time, as we continue to learn from the fleet, the feature will control more naturally. Now, what's really cool about this feature are a couple of things, and I'll go through that with you now. So first of all, you might have seen some of my other videos where with uh, traffic signals or traffic lights in Australia, where they're called, if there is a red traffic light, the car will stop, which is great. But if there's a green traffic light, the car will actually slow down and you've got to make a decision for the car whether to keep going or to stop. And that's with tapping the autopilot stalk or with your accelerator pedal. Now with this update, which I'm hoping to try very soon with our drive, is that when the traffic line shows that it's green, then the car will continue to proceed which is fantastic. And the important point is that is when there is a lead vehicle ahead of you. So I'm assuming that the car will take advantage of the traffic aware cruise control that's already inbuilt with the vehicle. That is, if it sees the car ahead of it proceed, it will also follow it as well. If you're the first car, I can only presume that you've got to actually activate the car. We'll test that today, of course, in our drive. So the second thing I'm really excited about is the second paragraph, this line here. It says, this feature will not attempt to turn through intersections, but over time, as we continue to learn from the fleet, the feature will control more naturally. Now that will be really exciting when the car can actually turn by itself on autopilot. And that will be a very big update indeed, something I'm very much looking forward to, hopefully in the next few months. Now the next feature that's come to this update is navigate on autopilot exit passing lane. While navigate on autopilot is activated, your car can now remain in the passing lane to adjust your passing lane preference, tap controls, autopilot, customize navigate on autopilot exit passing lane. So what I'm reading here is that once the car, if you've got this setting on, once the car overtakes, it will actually stay in the overtaking lane Something probably that I can't see myself using. I quite like to go either in the middle lane or the left lane in, um, in a two-lane lane, two-lane two road rather, or a middle lane if it's a, a multi-lane road. I don't really like to stay in the right lane too much, which is our passing lane in Australia, driving on the left-hand side of the road. So uh, we'll have a look today and um, we'll obviously give it a test, but Again, something I probably wouldn't use too much of. The other release notes are things I've already tested in previous videos, including green traffic light chime, or bings or bongs, uh, auto steer stop sign and stop light warning, and also cruise set speed improvements. If you want to have a look at those features, I suggest you look at uh, my link above here for my previous software update videos. Let's have a look at the autopilot settings now. So we'll tap on settings, go to autopilot, 
So we'll put auto steer on, we'll put navigate on autopilot on. Let's press customize navigate on autopilot. Enable at start of every trip, yes. Speed based lane changes, yes. We'll put it on mild. I find Mad Max and even average a bit too much for me. Exit passing lane, for the purposes of this video, I'll put it on no, which means that when I overtake, I assume the car will stay in that overtaking lane and not sneak back into the left lane. So we'll test that out today, certainly. And we do require lane change confirmation. I quite like having that at this stage. So that is navigate on autopilot. And we've also got things like the traffic light and stop sign control, of course, uh, green light, traffic light, chime, full self-driving visualization preview, and of course, summon beta. All right, guys, well, that is uh, release notes for 2020.36.10. Let's go for our customary drive. Let's do it right now. Okay, so we are just on the Sydney Harbour Bridge now, heading into town. Uh, one thing I didn't know, mention in the release notes is that uh, the uh, speed sign recognition is not available yet in Australia from this release. So hopefully with the next one we'll see that. It's just uh, reading speed limits off the navigation and map data, not from the uh, speed limits or the visually posted speed signs here. So uh, you might have seen my previous video where the Harbour Bridge lane indicators, uh, which look like traffic lights, are actually being ignored now by the car, which is great. Oh, although maybe not that one. That's interesting. Okay, I had to uh, confirm that one. Sorry, I spoke too soon. I apologize. Anyway, what we're going to do is um, go into the town and uh, have a look at the traffic light go on green feature and then uh, work our way back on the Harbour Bridge northbound, have a look at the navigate on autopilot uh, lane passing uh, feature and then head into Chatswood for our customary Friday night Malaysian food takeaway pickup for the family. All right, I shall see you all very shortly. All righty guys, I'm just on York Street now. I'm going to uh, put autopilot on and that just broke very hard there, but it is going through on green, which is great. I didn't um, have to confirm with the stalk or with the accelerator, which is great. And um, and I'm coming up now to a red light. So here is a great opportunity to test what happens when we are the first car at a red light. So it stopped really nicely at the red light. So we'll see what happens when the lights turn green, whether we have to accept or whether the car will go forward for us. I assume that because we're not the second or subsequent car. Um, okay, well, it says autopilot unable to proceed, so we can't uh, do anything at this stage. But I wonder whether that would come up for all situations where you're the first car at a red light. Interesting. We shall see when the lights turn green. All right, lights turned green. Didn't get the chime, that's because I didn't wait the two seconds, I assume. But I did have to uh, confirm with my indicator or with my autopilot stalk to proceed. Uh, coming up to uh, another uh, red light now, but this time, this taxi has cut ahead of me, which is fine. Oh, and that bus is doing something funny next to me, but that's okay. But uh, here's another good test, because now we're the second car at a red light. Car stopped very nicely. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Didn't have to do anything that time. I didn't touch the older pilot stalk. I didn't press my accelerator pedal. Second car at the light, light turned green and the car moved on green. So fantastic, very happy with that. That worked really well. Again, I was the third car for that light and I didn't do anything again. And the car just moved forward, which is fantastic. Bus turned out, which is fine. Got a little chime that time. And this will be an inter interesting lane here because it's not really a straight bit. It sort of curves to the right, but the car did really well. It still moved forward past the intersection. So great test once again. Okay, so we're just coming up Harris Street now. It's always a good road to test green lights. Just put autopilot on. Always a whole bunch of greens that we can go through. And again, uh, green light, no confirmation needed. I'm on autopilot, auto steer, and the car is just doing its thing like it used to. 
uh, where it's just going on green, even though I've got the traffic light uh, awareness feature on or reactivity. So happy days, seems to be doing okay. Of course, guys, you know, my usual warning, autopilot, hands on the wheel. It's always beta at this stage, eyes on the road. It does straight lines really well. Um, not doing turns yet, but as you saw in the release notes, they're sort of hinting at the fact that it might be coming soon. Maybe by the end of 2020, don't know. It's already September, so they've got, they've got three months to get turning, turn in the city roads for autopilot. That, that'd be amazing. I cannot wait for that feature. Okay, let's match the speed limit down to 40. That's really good. That's, we've done about five or six green lights now and um, I've not had to confirm once. So fantastic. All right, so what I'll do is I'll uh, go up back up through the city. I'm just gonna lane change again so that we know that works well. I might just cancel it now and turn left here onto Broadway. And then what we'll do is uh, head back up north up towards Chatswood, like I said, to get dinner, and then we'll test navigate on autopilot. See you very soon. All right, guys, we're just heading back northbound on the Harbour Bridge, back to the north side. I live fairly close to the city, so I don't really get uh, much of an opportunity to use navigate on autopilot, because at this stage, it uses select roads, ma mainly major highways and freeways and motorways, uh, so, this road is one of only very few roads in Sydney where you don't have to pay a toll uh, and also get to use Navigate on autopilot. So uh, this is kind of the Western distributor heading towards the Harbour Bridge. So what we'll do now is I'm going to um, activate autopilot there. See with that noise. Now this is another reason why I don't have uh, lane change without confirmation because I quite like to still have some control about when I lane change. Otherwise, from past experience, the car just does its own thing, which is a little bit scary at times. So at this stage, um, the red line indicates it's not ready to change, but it's saying, ideally you want to be in this lane next to you. So I think once we get the green light, or rather once the car allows us to do so, we will change lanes and um, do what the car wants us to do. So at the moment I'm going at 64, the car next to me is going at a similar speed. Um, I can see another car coming up fairly quickly behind me, so I won't change either. Now this bit's really tricky, so I'm going to see what the car does. Yeah, so it's reverting back to a basic autopilot at this stage. Once we cross the bridge, uh, usually it goes back to navigate on autopilot, so we'll uh, We'll re-adjourn once we cross the bridge. See you very soon. Alright guys, we've just crossed the bridge, so we'll see what happens. Whether it switches back to navigate on autopilot, yes it does. Now, uh, it's 80 kilometers an hour for this bit, so what I'll do is just go up to 80 and tap the speedometer there. It does its thing, fantastic. All right, so it wants me to change lanes. Okay, no problem, I can do. Mr. Autopilot, not a problem. All right, so navigate on autopilot is uh, that blue line there, as opposed to the tram lines as you saw before with basic autopilot. Uh, wants me to change back. Now, I did have exit passing lane no, which means that it really should be keeping in this lane. Uh, but that's okay. We shall do what uh, it wants me to do. Because I think if I stay in that right lane, yes, I'm just seeing right ahead of me now. If I stay in that lane, I'm going to be going into the uh, Mossman Manly exit, which is not something I want. So computer, as usual, you are smarter than me. Very good even though I'm a local in Sydney. Oops, that was quite embarrassing. Uh, no problem, so it's gone back to basic autopilot at this stage, uh, just uh, tailing this bus here ahead of me. Smelling its lovely diesel, fantastic. So yeah, that was, um, that was good. I'm glad I followed the car's instructions. Okay, so 
Yeah, speed limit is definitely 80 on this bit, even though it, uh, see, this is why we need visual speed sign recognition. See, it says 70 on there, but it's definitely 80, as you can see on the um, uh, indica indicators above me there. So yeah, I've got to say, it can't come soon, soon enough. Uh, visual speed sign uh, reading. So hopefully the next update, we'll get that. All right, that chime indicates we are back on navigate on autopilot with the blue lines are great. Hopefully it'll pump back up to 80 real soon. It wants me to lane change, okay, no problem. So I guess now we'll start our test to see whether it stays in the passing lane, which we are now in. Oh man, now it wants me to go back to the middle lane. Okay, let's do what it wants me to do. I'm driving into the sun. Happy days. Okay, so I'm in the middle lane of the Gore Hill Freeway. Uh, the bit that connects the Warringah Expressway to the northern suburbs of Sydney. Does the middle lane count as a passing lane in a multi-lane road like this? I guess so. Um, okay, wants me to overtake. Okay, I guess, I guess whether, will it, will it, will it stay in the right lane now that I am overtaking this um, Hilux ahead of me here? We shall see. Now the thing is, if I stay in this lane for too long, I'm going to end up in the Lane Cove Tunnel, which is not something I want. So I want to go to Chatswood. Um, even though I must say, I set, set it to North Ride in the settings, so... Uh, that's okay, we'll, we'll exit just before the Lane Cove Tunnel, which we can do. But look, look at this, I am now in the right lane of a three-lane road. And this is a, definitely a passing lane. So it's doing its thing, it's... As advertised, I'm staying in the passing lane because I set it in the autopilot settings as you saw before. I am now a right lane hog, thanks to you, Tesla Model 3, and your autopilot settings. I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable, I must say. I don't like staying in the right lane too long, but that's what the Tesla wants me to do. Well, I think I think that's it, it's done its thing. I mean, that's the test passed, right? Let's go back to the, uh, the middle lane. Like I said, I don't want to go in the Lane Cove Tunnel. Does it force me back into the right lane? Well, I guess I've got it set on North Ride, so I probably would eventually. But for, for this experiment, I think I'm going to cancel it now because, like I said, I'm going to Chatswood, uh, not North Ride. So um, at this point, I will cancel right there so we can go to Chatswood. Alrighty, guys. Well, that is uh, navigate on autopilot with uh, with that passing lane feature test, along with my other tests, including the traffic light. Uh, go on green, which is fantastic, something I've been looking forward to, and many owners as well, as I can see on social media, so that's great. Two new features to play with for your Tesla Model 3 um, 2020.36.10. As usual, a mouthful with uh, these updates. And uh, like I said, two updates in 24 hours. Fantastic work. Thank you, Tesla. All right, guys, well, uh, if you enjoyed that video, I really appreciate if you can give it a like, um, and of course, subscribe. If you haven't done so already yet, really appreciate that. And uh, have you found any features that I haven't covered yet in 2020.36.10 for your Tesla Model 3 as I squint into the sun? I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, but if you have, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And along with any other tips you have about your Tesla, I'd love to hear from you as well. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. And until next time, happy charging.